So in this video, I'm going to show you how multiple people can collaborate on the same project using Git workflow. So quick introduction, GitHub is kind of like a Google Drive, but for code and instead of a project in GitHub, you call it a repository. So you have your local repository, which is a local version of your project. And then you have your remote repository, which is the version that is stored on GitHub. So you will be working on your local machine and you will be pushing those changes to your GitHub account. So that's the typical workflow. Now on GitHub, let's say if this is a project, when you are invited to a project, you will typically get an invitation email that looks something like this, that I have Ashwin Sikhar as an owner has invited you to this specific projects. When you accept the invitation, you can go and create a GitHub account if you don't have one, or if you already have one, you create a GitHub account and you log in and you should be able to see this project within your GitHub. So mine looks something like this. So I'm logged in inside the collaborator account. Um, Ashwin Sikhar is my account, but I invited this new account, I created this just to show you this example. So once I'm inside this account, what I can do is I can access this community gardens. Now to bring this project over to your local machine, you can just directly go into cursor and within cursor, let me zoom out a little bit, open a new folder, just go into the place where you want to keep all your projects. In this case, I'm gonna, let me move this. I'm just gonna create a new folder called main can call it anything else you want. So once I'm in this folder, I can open this folder. And once I'm here, I can open a new terminal by clicking here on the top left. Let me zoom in a little bit. There are a few commands you need to type right now. And I will paste those commands here that you can simply copy paste. First, you want to initialize a repository. Initializing a repository is you declaring that you want to track all the changes henceforth. It's just enabling the feature. And once you've done that, so you're going to say git remote add origin. So you're saying git is the command and git remote is say you're linking the remote origin and add is basically the addition, right? It's pretty straightforward. You're gonna go into code and just copy this command, this URL over here, and just paste it at the end. So you're just linking this local repository to the remote one. So once you've done that, you also want to identify yourself as who are you as this user who is going to make these changes. So as an owner, when I receive these changes, I know who sent it. So I'm just going to say git config user name and I'm going to give my username cohort. Your username would be the one with which you created your GitHub account. So you can find it here on the top right. So I'm just going to enter my username and I'm also going to say git config user email tiny at gmail.com. And that will basically identify who you are with git. So once you've done that, you can simply say git pull origin main and that will just bring all your changes or all your code from GitHub and paste it in your local machine. So you can see this entire code, it was empty earlier because we created an empty folder. And now all this code that was in GitHub is now stored locally. Now you can easily run this project by running two commands that is written in the project. It might change depending on which project you're working. For this specific project, what you need to do is run npm install uh, or npm i that will install all the dependencies in the project. And then you need to say npm run dev, which will basically run the development server and you can open this link and you should be able to see this project's uh, interface. Okay, so now let's talk about the workflow and how multiple people actually collaborate. So the main branch, the one that you see here is your remote branch. This is managed by the owner. In this case, it's me. And it'll be the central source of truth. And I will manage this branch until the end of this project, right? The main branch will always be error free. There should be no errors on the main branch at any given point of time. As a collaborator, you should always try and keep your local branch, which is a copy of your main branch, to be updated with the main branch. So you always have the latest version of the main branch stored locally. And I'm gonna show you how to keep that in sync. So what we did right now is we took the main branches using the URL, we created a copy of it, and now we have a copy of it inside cursor. And that's what you see here. And this copy is the copy of the main branch and we have to keep pulling this copy with the main content. As you see, the local server is running on 5174. So I'm gonna open a new terminal window. I can access the previous one from here. So within this new terminal window, if let's say there are new changes in the remote branch, I'm talking about this branch, if either me or a different collaborator has 
added some changes to the remote one. You can pull those latest changes to the local one by just saying git pull origin main and that will just go pull the changes. In this case, there is no changes. So that's why it says already up to date. But if there are changes, you will see them reflected. Now, here's a few things just as best practices that you need to remember, which will make your experience much smoother. Never make changes to the main branch. Instead, always create a feature branch. This is because the main branch, you can keep it conflict free. If you make changes to the main branch and you pull changes from the remote branch, it might happen that there's a bit of a conflict. Like you make some changes and it diverged from what the main branch is doing. So now you will have to get into a bit of comparing on what the main branch was and what the local branch was, and you have to merge those conflicts. Now, developers are typically used to doing this. It's not that hard if you learn how to do it. But as someone who is new to this whole thing, this might get a little too complicated for you to compare the differences and then merge them. And that's a bit confusing. So that's why an easier workflow would be to treat the main branch as the local version of your main branch as something that you will always keep it in sync with the remote branch, but you don't touch it, right? You don't make changes to it. When you want to make a change, what you'll do is you'll create another copy of your local branch within your local machine, and that's called a feature branch. So a feature branch is specifically for one single feature. So let's say in this case, for example, I want to, I don't know, add another texture to say, just add as many tasks as possible, for example, or I just want to change the color of this card. So that would be, I would create a feature branch that is called change color card, right? And once I make that change, I will, let me go back to Figma. So once I make that change in the feature branch, I will push that feature branch to a remote feature branch. So it will be new branch created in the remote, which is a feature branch. And me as the owner of the project, what I will do is I will see this feature branch and I will understand what changes you made and I will merge it into my main branch. And all this conflict handling is something me as an owner will do it. So usually someone more experienced with development is the one managing this part. And you as a designer or someone else working in the team can simply make a copy of the main branch, create a feature branch, make your changes in the feature branch, push it to the remote feature branch, and then that's it wait till it gets merged and once it gets merged just pull it again right so what then you may ask what am i going to do with this feature branch so once it's merged you don't need this anymore you can just delete this so you, you're just creating these single time use copy branches making those changes pushing them and once they're merged just delete them so when you want to create a new feature create a new branch create a new copy of the main branch and then do it all over again. Let me just go over the notes over here quickly. So the feature branch is just where you work on your changes. This is where you push your changes, add a commit message. You say, okay, this feature branch, I worked on this specific thing. You can create as many feature branches as you want. You can keep updating your feature branch, both your local and remote. So you could make some changes today, make some changes tomorrow. You could push your changes today and then tomorrow you may realize, oh, I wanna add that one more thing. So you can continue to do that in your feature branch and push them. So this is something that you can keep doing as much as you want until you're comfortable. And then you let me know that, okay, I'm ready to merge this feature branch into the main branch and then I can do that for you. And you can keep committing so you keep track of everything. So you it creates a neat version history for you and that's the advantage of this. So you can, if you make a mistake, you can always go back to the previous one. And I will see the changes in your feature branch and merge it into a remote branch. And once it's merged, you can pull the latest changes from the main branch to your local branch. I already mentioned this. So this is the Git workflow on a high level in theory. So let me show you how that works in practice. So if you, let's say in this case, I have a local branch that is a copy of the main branch. So this is basically this one, right? So now I wanna change the color of the card, right? So I can do that by just going to this little branch and I will go to this thing and say branch and I will say create branch and I can say change card color just one one word is better if you want to use just use hyphens so now once you did that it has created this new branch how do you know which branch it is in you can go into terminal and just say git branch and you can see that this is highlighted so it shows that this is the current branch and there's also a main branch 
which you have, right? So let me clear this so that it's clean. So now a bit of cursor, you, there, there's a whole section on introduction to cursor that you can understand how to work with cursor. But I know that, okay, so this is the data entry form. So what I'm gonna do is go into my cursor and I'm gonna say, change the color of the card to light pink, right? Just whatever in this example, let's just use light pink. Okay, so it makes all these changes. I'm just gonna accept these changes. And if I go here, you can see that, okay, I made this changes to light pink, right? So now that I have this changes made, what do I have to do? I have to go into my little branch thing again. I can close this AI chat, go here and just go type the message. So I can say changed card UI color to light pink, right? So just type as detailed as possible. So I know exactly what changes you've made. If it's a list, try and type the whole list. And once you've done that, just go and, oh, you can also generate a commit message. So it will automatically fill in everything that you just did, which is kind of cool. And then once it's done, just go commit those changes. And what it'll do is see, it added this new commit message, refactor day form styles and up and update package lock.json. So once that is done, what you're gonna do is go and publish branch. So that's it. So when you publish the branch, I can see these latest changes from within the project. So you can see, let me refresh this page and you can see this change card color when I go to these branches and here's your remote branch. So you can see that tiny cohorts updated this thing and there are some changes over here. So now when you finish this and inform me, what I will do is I will compare this thing and go merge it into the, to the main branch. Now, what do I do? So if let's say I am okay with all these changes, um, I'm gonna go into the main branch and I am going to go merge this branch to the main branch and I will delete it from the remote, right? So you won't see this change color card branch again. So you're gonna go and just type git branch here, which will say, okay, now you're in the change color card branch and there is another main branch. So you can just go to git checkout main, which is just go and check out the main branch. So if you say git branch here again, you can see that it's main is the branch selected. I believe you can also do that from here. So you can just go and say git checkout to and just go select main. That's basically how you would do this in the UI. Okay, so now that you're in main, you can you don't need the change color card anymore because you already made those changes, sent them to me, I reviewed them, I merged them. So now that you're in main, always remember to do git pull origin main, which will always keep your main branch local in sync with your remote branch. Okay, so now that I have my git all sync, my local is, now my local main branch is updated with the latest one. I don't need this thing anymore. So remember to be on the main branch and you can just go say git uh, branch and say delete branch and just go and delete this change color card branch. That's it. So you deleted it from locally. It's okay. You don't need them anymore because those changes have been merged. And even if you accidentally delete them here, you already published it to the remote one. So there's a copy of it as well. So this in summary is how you work with Git in this in the shared environment. I hope this was clear. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.